So today we're at Tobermore and as you can see, it's a beautiful day, but regardless of that, the job's got to go on. So today we're going to be laying the historic slab in the bracken colour. Before starting, it is important to check and be aware of the locations of any services such as gas, water, electric, and even oil, as you could damage these during the installation. You will need the following tools, equipment, and PPE. Shovel, string line, pins, screeding rails and bar, plate compactor, cement mixer, spirit level, soft brush, masonry saw, mini digger, high-vis vests, safety boots, dust mask, gloves, ear protection, safety glasses. Some other materials you may need. In this situation, we're using an MOT Type 1, or what you know as 40 mil to dust, or blinded. Sharp sand for the laying course. Rompox easy fix to joint off patio. Sand and cement for concreting the curbs. You may also require drainage channels and recessed manhole covers. All these materials can be purchased from your local builders merchants. The first step is the excavation process. To work out the depth that you need to dig out, certain things need to be considered. You will need to take into consideration the depth of the flag, the laying course which should be 30 mm thick and the sub-base layer which should be 100 mm thick. So now we're going to install our edge restraints. In this case, we're using the Tobermore curb stones. Edge restraints are paramount for the structural integrity of your patio. When installing your edge restraints, it's so important to use a string line to achieve the correct level. Edge restraints need to be bedded on a mortar bed. In this case, we're using a six to one, six sharp, one cement. Okay, we're laying our curbs now. We're working to the string line and we're using the boat level and the level as we go. It's so important that we maintain what we're doing, just ensuring that we know that it's level on the top. So a final check with your level at the back, on the top, and from the inside. Well, it's important now that we've checked the line, we've checked the curb on the back, we've used the level, we know where we are, everything's in place now. Now we're gonna back up our curved stones with some concrete and haunch it from behind. Now it is time to install the sub-base layer. The sub-base layer must be installed with a slight forward. The sub-base is extremely important as it gives the patio its structural integrity and prevents any sinkage. So we're doing the final preparation for this sub-base for this proposed patio area. Some people ask me, how do we achieve the falls with the patio? For this patio, we're using a one in 84. So what we have is 3.8 meters, from A to B, we divide the 80 mil into the 3.8, giving us a 47.5 mil drop from one end to the other end. This fall should be created in the sub base, not the laying course. It's essential to have a fall on your patio. Sitting and standing water is simply not good. To create the fall in the sub base, place the string line at the finished level at the highest point and run it to a wooden peg at the lower end. Use a string line spirit level to check its level. At the low end, measure down the string line 47.5 mil. Place a wooden peg at this level. This now indicates where the sub base material needs to be brought up to. You can do these in various locations to guide you. Pour in the Type 1 aggregate and distribute using a shovel. 
Measure the depth, making sure you have installed 100 millimeters. Now compact the aggregate using a vibrating plate compactor. When compacting, you will need to do several passes with the plate compactor until a fully compacted sub-base layer has been achieved. For a Tobermore patio or driveway installation, you need to use a sharp, gritty sand. And that sharp, gritty sand needs to be moist enough to form a ball. Spread out the sand with a spade or rake, then compact it with a single pass of the plate compactor. Now we come to the screeding of the sand. This should be done with screeding rails and a screeding bar. This process helps to create a smooth and even surface on which we will lay our flags. Set the screed rails into the sand laying course and use the screeding bar to drag off any excess sand. This creates one smooth and consistent 30 mm sand laying course, which the flags can be laid on. So as you can see, we've got the final bedding course in place. We're using the sharp sand. We've had several passovers. The lads have got the screeding rails in place, so we achieve the correct height. The slab that we are laying, we will ensure that the slab is three to five mil above the edge and restraint for final compaction. So the sand has been sufficiently compacted with a plate compactor. Now we have to remove the screed rails. And what happens when you remove the screed rails, you're actually left with a void. So we need to fill those voids in, like so, and float off as we come back. What Tobermore have done to ensure that your paving arrives in good quality standard They've put these biodegradable beads between the slabs to ensure there's no scratching. And if it happens that you have got the odd little scratch, they can be removed quite easy just by rubbing off like that. As you can see, we've got the picture frame already in place. To ensure that your patio can look as good as it can be, we need to go off a straight edge. And that will ensure that your patio is gonna look absolutely fantastic through the laying process. Even better what Tobermore have done, they've got you a laying pattern and the five sizes, they come in a 300 by 300, a 300 by 450, a 600 by 300, a 450 by 450 and a 600 by 450. Easy laying. When using multiple packs, you must make sure you mix from all packs to ensure a good blend. When using one pack, you must thoroughly mix the slabs to ensure a good blend. So I'm here with Sam. Sam works for Tobermore, never laid any paving in his life, but Sam is gonna to demonstrate to you today and show you how easy the process is in laying this product. Sam, I think that a really good tip for when you're laying this paving, it doesn't matter how big or strong that you are, right, and how long you've been doing it, it's so important that you look after your, your body. So what I would say is that when you're picking these products up, make sure you bend your knees, keep the body, keep the, the slab close to your body, so it just takes the weight off your back. It's absolutely amazing how quickly this patio is being laid and Sam's just doing it with ease. It's just never laid a patio before, but look. You need to avoid those cross joints because it's a weak point and it doesn't look good aesthetically. But have a look, we've done this purposely so you can actually see it. This is what we call a cross joint where all slabs form on one cross. It's at this point, sometimes you may just deviate from your lay and pattern because you're approaching that cutting edge. And one thing you need to avoid is those straight lines. So in this case, we'll be cutting this slab to go in that position and avoid that straight line. It's so important 
to understand that it's okay to put two 450 by 450s next to each other, side by side. It's absolutely fine, as long as you don't repeat that pattern too much throughout your patio. Well, because of the random size slabs that we have in this patio, and it's a four meter by four meter, we've been able to reduce the number of cuts required. In this case, there is only six cuts. So we're at that point now, we can start measuring our cuts. In this case, we have a 450 by 300, and this will do two cuts. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the gap that we have here. And remember, measure both sides, just in case there might be a possibility of it running out. And then we transfer those measurements onto the slab that we're gonna cut. Once you have your cut piece, you can install it into the patio. It is important to place the cut edge against the border. So we've been able to get two cuts from one unit. You can cut this slab now using a disc cutter, or if you wish, you can hire a wet saw from your local tool hire. We thoroughly recommend when using a disc cutter that you use the correct PPE. In this case, goggles, mask, ear defenders, and gloves. In order to keep the dust down as much as possible, it's recommended to use a water suppressant feature like this with your disc cutter. All the cuts are now in and they fit absolutely perfect. We've measured twice, cut once, and we've minimized the waste. A major advantage of using the historic bracken is that they have these spacer nibs, creating the space which will allow you to brush your jointing compound into. Well, we're just checking the final levels of this patio and it's looking absolutely perfect. The major advantage of using the historic paving is that we don't need to compact it. But one thing that we need to do, we need to ensure that there's no lipping and we do that using a rubber mallet. We are using the Ron Pox Easy Fix to joint our patio. It's fast, it's efficient. However, there are similar products on the market. Your Ron Pox Easy Fix will come vacuum packed. So as soon as you cut it, it's gonna start reacting with the air. Before spreading your Easy Fix over the top of your patio, you must ensure that the surface of your patio is nice and wet to ensure that the Rompox Easy Fix doesn't stick to the top of your paving. What I would suggest when using your Easy Fix is that you use a stiff brush and a soft brush. The stiff brush will help you to distribute your Easy Fix across your patio. Always remember to brush at a 45 to ensure that you don't brush the easy fix out of your joints. It's so, so important to make sure that your joints are completely full. And if it means going over your patio again, you need to do it. What I would suggest, once you've distributed your easy fix across your patio, at some point, you're gonna make sure that that grout falls into your joint. So it'd be beneficial just to run some more water over the top, keeping the surface nice and clean and making sure that the easy fix goes down into those joints, filling it up completely. Remember, you're on the last leg of your patio. This is the finishing part. You just gotta make sure you pay some attention to what you're doing and make sure that that grout gets into the joint. Well, let's simply face it, this has been an absolutely fantastic installation. It's been quick, it's been efficient, and Sam, working with me, we've done this at ease. It's as simple as that. The other thing to mention is if you look at the time it's taken to install this patio, it's taken approximately from screeding to laying the slabs to brushing the joints a day. As you can see, this patio is looking absolutely perfect. 
This jointing product, the Easy Fix, will go hard within 24 hours. But remember, it may be necessary to top up at some point in the future should it drop. And don't forget to use a soft brush to brush off any excess material that may be on your surface of your paving and leaving it nice and clean. Sam, great Northern Ireland weather, absolutely perfect, perfect product for working in the rain. You've helped me to complete this product, this project now. How do you feel? Do you feel you you could do this again? Yeah, absolutely. The flags were really easy to install uh, with the built-in spacer nibs, and then the Rompox Easy Fix itself really easy once you just soak the paving surface to brush into the joints. There we are, like a pro. If you're a DIYer and you feel confident enough to undertake a project like this, give it a go. But if you're not, go to the Tobermore website you'll be able to find an approved paving installer who can help you through the process and make it nice and easy for you. As you can see, the garden room is completed. Our new patio, the historic bracken looks absolutely fantastic. And what we've done, we've added a little bit of furniture and some plants to show you how it can look. The only thing that's left to do is for you to enjoy it.